A robocall that has mimicked President Joe Biden is encouraging Democrats not to vote in the New Hampshire primary. Now, the message says that it's important that you save your vote for the November election. Voting this Tuesday only enables the Republicans in their quest to elect Donald Trump again. Your vote makes a difference in November, not this Tuesday. The message then concludes with a phone number belonging to a former New Hampshire Democratic Party chair. But I'll have more on that because the mystery only deepens. Okay. But yes, a fake Biden robocall. So it's not Joe Biden that made that message. So first off, this is weird. This is bizarre. Second of all, it's the Republican primary, but it is an open primary. So that means Democrats could vote to, for example, if they want to derail Trump in the state or to push Nikki Haley or do the opposite or write in Joe Biden. Uh, and of course, that's where this uh, former party chair comes into play. But as I said, uh, South Carolina is the first official Democratic primary for the cycle. And so Biden's not even on the ballot. What is going on here? There's a lot of confusion. Now, the number at the end of the robocall belongs to somebody named Kathy Sullivan. Now, she used to be the, again, the New Hampshire Democratic chair. She's now running a super PAC, but that super PAC is helping efforts to write in Joe Biden in the primary. So it would be advantageous to her cause if Democrats went out and voted, but did so by writing in Joe Biden's name. <laughs> this robocall is to say, oh, don't get involved. Just stay home. Just stay home. D don't be part of the primary. So this is really, really weird. Doesn't make any sense, right? Uh, now, in an interview, Sullivan said that she began receiving calls Sunday evening from those who had received the message. One woman she spoke to told her that Biden had called her personally, though she said she was not a Biden supporter. So this is very, very weird. Uh, Sullivan said that she responded with, wait, you got a call from Joe Biden and he gave you my number? Now, a volunteer for the right and never also received the call and recorded it, according to Sullivan, and shared it with organizers of the Biden write-in campaign. One of the organizers then shared it with NBC News. So they do have the call, and apparently it, it sounded just like Joe Biden. Sullivan that said uh, that while it isn't clear who was behind the robocall, it's obviously somebody who wants to hurt Joe Biden. Quote, I want them to be prosecuted to the fullest extent possible because this is an attack on democracy of Sullivan, an attorney who believes the call could violate several laws. I'm not going to let it go. I want to know who's paying for it, who knew about it, and who benefits. So, look, you might think, whoa, whoa, overreaction here. No, no, but it's not, though. This is an AI-generated voice that is impersonating a presidential candidate in order to do voter suppression. That's pretty serious stuff, all right? And to me... This feels like a test run for something else. What would that be? I don't know. More misleading phone calls, maybe to get people to go to the wrong poll uh, polling place, uh, or just to get them to stay home during the general election, perhaps. I don't know. But it is, it's pretty dangerous, all right? It's really messed up. Now, the quite a big question is, who did it? Could it be Republicans? Well, it's not like Republicans haven't resorted to dirty tricks before. In fact, in New Hampshire, uh, as NBC News explains, Sullivan served as party chair in 2002 when a so-called phone jamming effort was carried out during a hotly contested U.S. Senate race. Two Republican officials, including the executive director of the state Republican Party and a Republican National Committee operative, were convicted of using cell uh, computer-generated phone calls to disrupt Democrats' get-out-the-vote call center operations. So, yes, they've done dirty tricks before. Uh, I know all the way back in 2002, but I'm not saying that it couldn't be Republicans. I'm saying it absolutely could be Republicans, but we don't know for sure. Now, a spokesperson for Trump's campaign denied any connection to the call, saying, quote, not us. <laughs> we have nothing to do with it. Mm. Okay, sure. <laughs> ah, look, could it be a Democratic challenger? It's possible. I mean, I don't know for certain, but I, I don't see the point. Uh, the campaign of Dean Phillips, a Minnesota congressman challenging Biden for the nomination, said he was not aware of the uh, phone calls, but called it wildly concerning. 
And so far, we don't, I don't have any statements from any other candidates, Marianne Williamson or Jen Huger. Don't know. Don't know. Can't imagine it would be either of them. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, getting back to the uh, uh, to Dean Phillips spokesperson, uh, she said, any effort to discourage voters is disgraceful and an unacceptable affront to democracy. The potential use of AI to manipulate voters is deeply disturbing. Yes. Now, I'm going to go to a bit of a meta point, right? Look, as technology continues to evolve, the potential pitfalls of it become more and more apparent. Look, we've already had AI manipulation, okay? We've seen deep fakes. We've seen social media spreading fake news on behalf of certain campaigns against other campaigns. This is all stuff that we're not quite sure how to combat here, okay? We don't know how to put a stop to it. And it is concerning because, again, bad actors have access to these tools, and these tools can be used to undermine our democratic process. We have to be really, really careful. Our democratic process is kind of fragile as it is, you know, with a former, a, cer a certain former president attempting to steal the 2020 election, you know, that whole thing. And then you've got these tools, these deep fakes, these AI generated voices, these robocalls that are going on. And it, it is very, very concerning. So I, I don't know if there's some sort of cybersecurity, you know, defense against this uh, or, or even a plan to being developed on the national level. I would hope so because this does have the potential to an aid in voter suppression. And that is not a good thing. So everyone be beware of, you know, phone calls or mailers or videos that you see online of certain candidates because you never know if that's going to be fake 